well, look what followed me home. <laughs> um, so I was looking at Craigslist the other day, and somebody had listed a Rigol DP 832 and an 832A. They had one of each. And they said um, $300 for either one. And I thought that would be a screaming deal for an 832A. So I got a hold of the guy and he says, yeah, you can come over and take a look at it. But then I had to leave town. <laughs> I went up to, uh, up to Napa to spend, uh, spend a, a couple of days up in Napa. And when I got back, I said, hey, I'm back in town. And it was still available. So, uh, so I went over and uh, took a look at it. If people aren't familiar with these, they're uh, triple, uh, triple output. Um, let's see here. I think it's 30 volts, 30 volts, and 5 volts. And it's 3 amps, 3 amps, 3 amps. And um, let's see if we can turn it on here. You can hear the fan. So the fan only kicks on though when, it, when you start it up, just to make sure it's working, and then it goes down to an idle fan. It's still a bit noisy. Um, I'm not real crazy about the noise that the thing outputs, uh, but it's got a cool color display. Um, you can display it in this way, or you can display it in the old way. Um, let's see here. Classic. Yeah, you can do the three, um, you can do the three uh, columns. So some people like this, some people like the other one. Um, let's see, what else can I say about it? So it's going to replace this thing. This is an E3631A, and it is a beast. It is a great power supply. Um, I was fortunate enough to get this one for free. Um, that's a different story, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a great meter. Now the problem with the meter is though, is the display. Um, well, a couple problems with it. The display, you can only look at one of the, so it's got five volts, 25 and minus 25, and you can only look at one at a time up on the display. So that's kind of unfortunate. And the user interface to set the voltages and stuff is all done with this wheel. And you can't just type in a voltage, so it's a little bit uh, cumbersome that way. It's great over the bus. It's just awesome over the bus. Um, it does have another downfall, though. It is um, a bit different in its output voltages. So it can output 6 volts here up to 5 amps, which is great. That one only does 3 amps. This one does six, uh, uh, 5 amps. 3 amps, 5 amps. Um, and then the plus and minus 25 rails only go up to an amp though, one amp. And a lot of times that's just not enough. So the other one having a three amps on those is gonna be really, really handy. So I'm gonna put this over somewhere. I'll probably hang on to it just as a backup in case something blows up someday. Um, this is a great, great meter. And like I said, I got it for free, so no need to get rid of it. Um, so yeah, so let's take a little bit uh, closer look at the Rigel. So a couple things I like, a couple things I don't like. One of the things I like is you can individually turn on and off the different, uh, the three different power supplies, or you can turn them all on and all off. Um, when you turn them all on though, it asks you, okay. So it's a two push button to turn it back, to turn it all on. That's, that's for safety reasons. So that's probably okay. Um, I'll just need to get used to that one, uh, but you can turn this all, all on. Uh, and off uh, individually. So I really, really like that. I like the idea that you have three things here and three columns here. So I like this kind of kind of display better. Um, I like the way that you can see everything at the same time and it outputs watts, which is really, really nice. So my other meter didn't calculate watts or power supply didn't calculate watts. Um, you can uh, set tracking which is nice. So you can, uh, let's see, where is that? Where is tracking? Oh, here it is, tracking on. So you turn tracking on and you get this little uh, thing here that says these two uh, 
power supplies, the 30 volt power supplies are tracking. So if you change the voltage on this one, it'll change the voltage on that one. Um, so that's very, very handy for a lot of analog circuits and stuff. Um, it has uh, the five volts and this 30 volts have a common ground. This ground is floating and I have a ground jumper here between the plus and the ground. So I have, I, uh, I'm running this one in, in negative mode. Uh, so yeah, so you can float this one. Um, and then they all float above ground or above, above, above earth ground. All right, so those are the things that I kind of like about it. Things I don't like about it is I don't like this wheel. Although you get to type in a number, which is really, really nice. I don't like the wheel. And uh, it does also have a wheel here. Um, and you can kind of say it's uh, kind of change things. Let's go ahead and just turn this one on. And let's go ahead and light up something. Let's see here. Do I have? Yeah. Let's put in a, uh, let's see, this is going to be the yellow. Uh, one, two, three. I guess it's this one, yeah. All right, we can put this. There we go. I'm going to have a, uh, whoa, I'm going to have a, a light bulb. I'll put that under the de desk so we don't have to look at it. So it's uh, 12 volts. It's drawing 0.14 amps, and it's giving us 1.7 watts. So that's super, super cool. Um, so I don't think we can change the voltage. If we hit voltage, yeah, there we go. Now I can use the wheel. So it does have a wheel. And I check this out. It also gives you, gives you analog uh, readout for changing things. That's kind of goofy. I'm not sure. I don't think I'll ever, ever use that. But you can type in a number. Let's say you want 10. You say 10 volts, and it gives you 10 volts. So that's way cool. Uh, so let's go back to 12 volts. And uh, it's uh, 148 amps. Let's say we want constant current. So let's put in 100 milliamps. So you could say 0.1 amps and push this button here, but it's got a milliamp thing. So you could say 100 milliamps. And now we're in constant current. This is right here, constant current. So I like the milliamps and millivolts. So you can either type some amps or volts or milliamps or millivolts. So that's super cool. I like that a lot. Um, and then in addition to uh, having uh, three things, you can also Let's see, there's some utilities. So I, I, I just, like I said, I just got it last night, so I don't know all about it. But you can set up uh, display mode waveform. Yeah, so you can watch the voltage versus time and the current versus time. Uh, but I, but it's always zero to three amps and zero to thirty-two volts. I, I don't know how to change the uh, ranges on these. Uh, graphs yet. I don't know if you can do that, um, but at least you could see uh, things over time. Now, I believe it also has capability of um, making a bunch of measurements and storing them too. So let's go back to, uh, let's go back to this one. That'll be fun. Um, let's see here. Where is it? Utility? Store? Let's see, where is it? This one? Oh yeah, it's this one. So there's recorder, analyzer, monitor, and, and a triggering. So you can record things for some period of time. This is like record it for one second, and then you put it in a file, and it will record waveforms over one second. Uh, or you can change the period. You can change how many seconds you want to record things. Um, there's an analyzer that gives you a nice graph here. I haven't figured out how to use it though. <laughs> I guess I'll, I, this is a bad video because I don't know how to use this thing yet, but uh, I will read up on it and uh, see if I can't uh, figure out how to use the, uh, how to use the graphing capability in this thing. So there's um, 
analyzer and there's monitor. Monitor lets you set up some things and gives you warnings if the certain conditions are met. Um, gives you either, it'll turn the power off if it gets that condition, it'll give you a warning or it'll just beep the beeper. Um, so that's pretty cool. Timer, I don't even know what the timer is. Oh, there's another, another graphy thing. Yeah, so I need to learn how to use these things. And then there's helps. The helps are kind of useless on these things, but it does have uh, uh, does have help. All right, so uh, that's the new uh, the new power supply. I went ahead and uh, just put it under my Rigel here because uh, the display is quite small. It's a little bit hard to read. And so I need it really close to me to be able to see these small fonts. So I, I put it under here. It's nice to have the power supply close on the bench too. So you can hit the power because something goes bad. So I've kind of rearranged that. I've also rearranged above the, uh, above, let me show you. All right, so um, I've moved things over a little bit. Since I got rid of the, uh, that big Hewlett Packard or, Ag or Agilent power supply, I've moved over my old power supply because I'm not using it. It used to be over there and it's a really, really handy power supply and I want to use it more. So I've moved it over and it has a whole bunch of fixed trails. So no sense pushing all the buttons to get the power values that you want. Um, it has them all there. It has plus five, plus minus 12, plus minus 15 all set. And it doesn't have any fan or anything. So it's very, very quiet. And it also has one adjustable, uh, it also has one adjustable rail uh, that this knob handles. Um, and then you can you can monitor the uh, the various the various voltages here. So anyway, that was super handy. Um, my meters are a little bit lower to me now, and my uh, my Keithley is a little bit closer to me now. So I think that's a better layout. I kind of slid everything left a little bit, so it's a little more within arm's reach. So that'll be good. I haven't quite figured out what to do over there yet, um, but uh, we'll figure that out. Anyway, there you go.